Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another fun party. We're still broadcasting here from the X-Adafruit headquarters, but not for much longer. We'll tell you more about that. That's right. I'm Lady Ada. I am an engineer. <laughs> With me is Phil. I click buttons. He <laughs> clicks buttons. <laughs> All right. And he knows about capacitors. And this is Hans. <laughs> Hans He's will, a 555. Hans will be our special guest five minutes and 55 seconds into the show. Hello. All right. Tell them what's on tonight's show, Phil. On tonight's show, we're going to go over a awesome show and tell that just happened. Big news in the world of amateur radio. Lady Ada gives some tips on being an entrepreneur. I would suggest using special effects, not manic panic. Okay. Uh, Mo is making the rounds around the web. We got Mailbag. Got some Makey Makey Monday. Got some Time Travel Tuesday. We got some Google communities. There we are there. Hello. Yep. We're in a community. Adafruit Learning System. Raspberry Pi Web IDE. Big stuff going on there. Wearable Wednesday. 3D Thursday. Factory Friday. Pi Day. We've got a ton of new projects. Products. And projects. And projects. Our products are our projects. Project products. Maybe there's some time for it's not out yet. We'll see. Yeah. Nice. All that and more and a cat. All on Ask an Engineer. Okay. Big show. It's a big show. Um, some uh, programming notes. This is the last time we will be broadcasting from this location. Uh, we've uh, moved Adafruit from uh, the factory location here in the financial district to Soho. Uh, Lady Ada and I are moving uh, us uh, out of here as well. And we'll be broadcasting from the Adafruit factory starting next week, Saturday night. Unless there's some incredible disaster. Unless something, you know, who knows? Anything could actually happen. Yeah. Uh, but this is uh, uh, a, a great time to kind of thank this area for this, um, this apartment. Well, this 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 live workspace, this uh, factory, this this everything that we did here, um, it got us here. So we've been doing this show for over. Three and a half years. Yeah. And uh, it's been fantastic. We uh, started out uh, just one block from here, then moved here. Yeah. And then three and a half years ago, um, started this crazy idea of doing a live engineering show for one hour yeah. on Saturday nights. And we've never had a Saturday night free since, which is uh, fine, because if we were going out, we'd want to spend it with everyone uh, if we could manage to go around the world kind of like Santa Claus style, I yeah. guess. And uh, it's been great because we've been able to do shows and reach a lot of people, mm -hmm. uh, make a lot of new friends. And then uh, not too long ago, Google Hangouts started. So now we do a show and tell before each show. So um, look for lots of new and exciting things. We'll start the broadcast on Saturday nights uh, at the factory and then eventually probably move the show to another time so even more people can see it. Mm -hmm. So it's lots of good stuff ahead in 2013. But uh, we're just a couple blocks from uh, the Trade Center, uh, Ground Zero, and this area uh, got hit hard during Sandy. It was hit hard uh, at 9-11 and uh, we, we've stuck through this area and it's now, I feel like this area is kind of, it doesn't need us anymore. The businesses yeah. are all thriving. The construction is pretty much There's done here. There's plenty of lunch spots. There's plenty of things and I feel like um, you know, we grew up together here. Yeah. And, uh, this area has changed quite a bit since we moved in. It has. It, it's now quite residential. It used to yeah. not have that much. But a lot of uh, residential moved in to this, to this like, four-block area. Yeah. Okay. So, with all that being said, tonight's code is NASA. That's the name of the street that we're on. NASA gets you 10% off everything that's in, in stock. stock in the Adafruit store. So is it in stock? Is it in Do stock? you get 10% off? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, first up. We had show and tell. This is a massive show and tell. Really liked it. Lady Ada, tell everybody what was on the show and tell. Sure. Uh, we started out with Christian, who's a repeat customer. He showed off his really cool portable um, Arduino plus thermal printer plus um, RGB LCD plate. Um, so the shield uh, uh, it has an uh, RGB LCD and some buttons, and he can select the button, and it'll print out some cool graphics and text. Next up, we had Patrick, who's in, um, in Mobile, Alabama. And he's got uh, some betta fish, and his betta fish are picky about the temperature. So he made a, a basic 
um, sensor, uh, sensor slash, uh, you know, on-off control. And the cool thing is you basically used our learn.adafruit.com tutorials, followed them, got the thermocouple working, and then got the power switch tail working, and then combined the two, and his fish are alive, which is kind of the best thing you can have with beta fish. Um, next up, uh, double the atom uh, showed up. We had atom plus atom in their soda machine for a uh, school project. It was a Raspberry Pi, which controlled the graphics, which was uh, processing based. And then um, that was uh, tied to an Arduino Mega with an Ethernet shield. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how it, it happened, but you know, there's some connectivity. And it controls um, uh, four different uh, two liter soda bottles with our uh, liquid solenoids. And they would turn on and off to. Um, uh, uh, make a custom soda. So like uh, some people who are like, oh, I want half Dr. Pepper, half Mountain Dew. I, actually, that sounds really gross. But let's say like half Dr. Pepper, half Coke or something. So you, you can do stuff like that. Um, another cool thing is because you're saying like, you know, in McDonald's, they have the machines that do that. You know, they have the, you know, you can customize your drink, but they'll never mix Coke and Pepsi products. Yeah. So you can never have Mountain Dew and Coke in the same machine. Yeah. This machine, open source allows you to have two different brands. You could have RC Cola in there. You can cross the streams. It's not going to open up some void in space and time and Gozer is going to come out. You can I was just thinking, just like, why don't ever people mix like some of them? Like, oh, they're from Pepsi or Coke. So they'll yeah. never appear on the same uh, machine. I don't care um, who wins the soda wars. I just want the soda wars to end. I know. It's, it's tragic. There's, <laughs> okay, anyways, uh, Chris Courtright. Um, Chris is back. Alumni. Chris is back. A triumphant return. He showed up, folks, when, um, when you're done watching this show. Watch the recorded show and tell on YouTube.com. Don't forget to subscribe. But, uh, we should do a super edit of check, just Chris. Check out Chris's bot. It it's is a mega bot. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I like how he's just like, I probably sent this. I'm like, some of these senses don't really make sense, but they do look cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Uh, and then finally, William is back. He has a Tindy project that he's working on. It's a USB uh, tester that uses our uh, high level, uh, high side current sensor, uh, plus like some sort of Arduino mix. And uh, it connects to a computer so you can monitor real time uh, a USB power supply and current and wattage. Very handy because a lot of people now are doing projects that are, are powered off of USB, but USB power, it's not 5 volt guaranteed. It can droop 4.7, you know, 4.5, uh, or, or even P is as high as 5.25. That's yeah. the high end of the USB spec. So if you're doing something and you're a little sensitive about the voltage and current levels and voltage droop, uh, if you're testing a power supply, this project looks awesome. And you can check it out at like fried circuits.com or something? Yeah, it's also on Tindy. It's also on Tindy. And uh, we'll post up about it. Really yeah. cool project. Okay. All participants of the Show & Tell get a Show & Tell sticker. Make sure to email support at if you've been on the Show & Tell and you get a Show & Tell sticker in the mail. Some people collecting multiple Show & Tell stickers. And they're nice vinyl stickers. These aren't yeah, like they're beautiful. some crappy paper printed like laser jet printers. These we are like vinyl These are the real deal. Printers. And they're made with our partner out in New Jersey, Ambro Manufacturing, with a solar power facility using uh, the greenest things that are possible to use with the manufacturing process like this. Family-owned business, I think, believe, yeah, like believe the, since 1975, something like, like the that. the inks and the threads yeah. and everything. Yeah, they're cool. Okay. All right. Lady Ada, how do people get on the show and tell? Super easy. Go to learn. Uh, learn. Go, you should go to learn. To come anyway. <laughs> you should also go to plus.google.com slash plus Adafruit. I think it's google.com. Plus Adafruit. Yeah, the plus the symbol for Adafruit, yeah. but plus the word for plus at Google dot com. Or you can just like search for like Adafruit Google Plus page or whatever, and look for the post where I say comment here to be added to the show and tell circle because we have to add you to a circle before yeah. you can be invited, and then you'll be invited every week. Yeah, maybe I'll do this thing where I, this is the the notes from the show and tell. I'll just throw it off camera. Whoosh. Okay, oops, that didn't work out. Okay. Are you like doing it like a dentist? I think uh, yeah. Didn't uh, David Letterman does it? Go. Okay. I don't think they were, no, it was, what's his name? So it's a late night show. Around. We should have a top ten soon. I don't we know. Should, we okay. should, have a top ten. All right, next up, let's, uh, we got a lot, we got a big show. Gotta but that'd be funny. Got to keep moving. All right, big news in the ham radio world. Uh, amateur radio licenses hit 710,000 in 212. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's almost a million. I like that logo. Yeah. Look, look at, at that logo. Yeah, that logo is never going to change. That I love it. That is a sweet logo. So, um... If you're thinking about getting a, a 
ham radio license, it looks like it's on the upswing. I think the, there, there, was, there was a little bit of a separation in the maker movement for a while, and then I actually think they're getting back, mostly because of software-defined radio. Really interesting stuff going there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the hams and the other people. And you can get a techno code, like, it's, pretty, it's easier than ever. Yeah, also, it's like Spectrum you're allowed to play with, and like, yeah. as soon as people start getting electronics, they're like, wait, Look, what? They're, they're, this FCC thing where they let us use chunks of the Spectrum may not last that much longer, so yeah. go out there and get your two-meter license. All right. A little bit of follow-up, Lady Ada, after getting the Entrepreneur of the Year Award, you did a follow-up interview with uh, Entrepreneur.com, actually there. And uh, they had uh, a question for you, and they said, uh, what's the best business advice that you can give? And you said, keep your business focused on your passion. That's where you'll be able to lead your community. That's neat. Okay. I can't imagine doing anything else and I can't imagine you doing anything else because it takes a lot of energy and unless you really love it every single day you, you can't do it can't do it yeah you have to absolutely love it there's just too much work to be done to it not, is it is if to, you, to if you don't it. you'll just you'll be like this does not you know it's too much effort yeah otherwise. okay okay moving right along Mo. Mo the what resistor. About him? Mo the resistor making the rounds. So the plushies, um, the first ever plushies of components are are out. Um, we have a ton of these, and Mo is making the rounds. Don't um, forget, ten percent off. Yeah, ten percent off. Mo. We have twenty thousand of these plushies. Yeah. So. <laughs> I want to kind of dive into a big pile of them. Um, so Mo uh, uh, was uh, spotted holding up uh, some uh, uh, kitchen cabinets for the glasses. Mo was spotted on top of a uh, monitor doing some Eagle CAD. And uh, there's uh, Hans right there. Um, I'm, we're seeing a lot of kids with these. And what's neat is to see kids uh, recognize that this is an electronic component and think it's fun and cool and exciting. So we're still working out the game and the uh, kids show that's coming. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to work on some of the personalities behind them. So today, uh, Lady and I were talking about Mo's kind of laid back and he's almost a little bit of a surfer dude. And so uh, John Janier at, at, at Adafruit and I work on kind of the personalities. And I've been thinking that maybe Mo is uh, kind of like Keanu Reeves, like, whoa, whoa. And he kind of discovers everything. And he's also, also laid back and, and good hearted, almost yeah. like the Bill from Bill and Ted's Excellent yeah. Adventure. Yeah. And, you know, we always tell everybody be excellent to each other because that's an excellent quote. Well, anyways, a little bit about Mo. Okay. okay. Let's keep moving. Uh, there's a great article on Lifehacker, how to get started with DIY electronic projects, and it had Lady Ada's E is for Electronics Coloring Book. A ton of great uh, resources, heavily tweeted. Lifehacker is really uh, getting to electronics. Check out the article. Next up, packet. Packet of the mailbag. Every single week, we get letters. Letters. We get letters. That's on a, uh, I think that's on David Letterman, too. I haven't mm -hmm. seen Daniel. I just I, I think I saw David Letterman like ten I years ago. I thought you had this like fantasy of like David Letterman. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. I I don't know who, what the letter song is from. Anyways, this one is from PB. Thank you for your quick service and quality products. I received the items yesterday and they are working perfectly. It was truly a geek Christmas. The instructions on your website were clear, correct, and easy to follow. I hope there are many transactions with your company in the upcoming months. PB. All right. All right. Let's keep moving along. We got a lot of stuff going on tonight. Next, uh, Makey Makey Monday. We're up to Monday. So this is Makey Makey. Jay Silver, beep, beep, folks banana. at Joy Labs doing real cool stuff. Makey Makey is this really neat Arduino-compatible physical thing where you plug it in and it can turn anything in the world into a keyboard. Very cool. Lots of game controller type yeah. stuff. So here's a little video, just 30 seconds. Um, it's a little choppy, so just bear with it. Of kids who uh, made some zoo animals that interacted with the website. Let's watch the video. On Monday, Night Zookeeper introduced a Makey Makey into a school for the first time. Children created their own magical animals, as always, for the Night Zookeeper website. But then, they got to create their own board game, which they built using the Makey Makey, so that they could link the board to the website. Children could take a Night Zookeeper figure on his nightly rounds, and in doing so, trigger new information to appear on the website. Hello, Dave. Hello, Jimmy, and hello, Leon. Okay, right. that's it. So really cool use of Makey Makey. One of the things I like about the Makey Makey is you just throw it at kids, and they actually just figure it out. Yeah. They use the alligator clips. They, they make a drawing or a painting, and it just plugs in as a keyboard, and it can interact with the website. Very cool. Okay, next up, new feature. We've been doing this. Time Travel Tuesday. Time Travel Tuesday. Okay, Time Travel Tuesday. Time. time Travel Tuesday. We go back in time of all the things that's happened in the world of making and beyond. So, Lady Ada, I'm going to take you on a tour. Here we go. 
Yeah. <laughs> 2011, we got a vinyl sticker printer. That's right. And uh, we still have it. We don't use it that often because we exceeded the uh, demand for yeah, we what we could do. We couldn't. We ended up having have to one. have yeah. a real factory make them. All in right, New that was 2011. 2010, we did an offsite. You and I went rock climbing. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. And Brooklyn Boulders. Brooklyn Boulders. We went there. We said, okay, Adafruit offsite. 2009, ice, ice tube, tube clock, making the rounds. 2008, this is historic. So in 2008, uh, Bree left Make to go pursue uh, History Hacker, his pilot TV show. And. Wow, Bree looks. I don't want to say it, but like, man, he looks young in that photo. Yeah, 2008. Nothing ages you like venture capital. Um, so. Uh, uh, he looks like he's like 23 in this photo. Yeah. Uh, this is the weekend project he wasn't series. 23. <laughs> so uh, uh, Bree went to Etsy and to um, do his pilot, History Hacker, that debuted on uh, the election night when uh, Barack Obama yeah. was elected. And uh, my story with Bree was Bree was an art teacher in Seattle, and uh, I met him a few times. And I really wanted him to work at Make. And I was begging Dale, the publisher of Make, hey, this guy Bree, he's like Mr. Wizard and Mr. Rogers and like Bill Nye kind of all rolled up into one for, for the Maker movement. He was doing uh, these videos for his art class. Mm -hmm. And so eventually, um, I kept telling Bree, just make another video, make another video. And eventually, um, Bree shot a crossbow, I think, through a cell phone. And that's when Dale said, oh, you know, we should hire Bree. So that's kind of where. That's a good Dale impression. That's where it happened. And uh, it was really neat to watch Bree develop. Weekend projects. Uh, we work together on that, mm -hmm. and definitely go check that on the Make Zine YouTube channel. But it's really neat to kind of watch all these different things come out of the maker movement, which is almost you know it's going to be ten years pretty soon. But this was back in uh, 2008, so yeah. lots changed. Uh, you, Molly, our COO, and myself went to go visit uh, Bree and Jenny and the MakerBot folks at their new offices at Brooklyn MetroTech. Yeah, they have. Offices. They just did a massive build out, um, like 30,000 square, 30, square feet. And it's all for the administrative stuff and all for the, the, the support stuff and, design, and developers yeah. and design and all that. Uh, really cool because not, not, that's not the factory location. That's, yeah. the, that's like running the company. Separate, they have a separate factory yeah. too. So it was really neat to kind of watch all this. So we got a tour. It was neat to see another company um, uh, out in the world that's uh, in New York and in the maker scene. It's cool. Okay, next up. Keep on moving. Uh, 2007, DigiKey redesigned your site. Yeah, they put photos up. Yeah. All right, guys, you thought it was you thought like DigiKey is a pain in the ass to use now. Yeah. Like five years ago, there was no photos. 2006, you were working on Borduino 2.0. Okay. 2005, look at this cute bike you made. Yeah, I built this little bike off of a of a, like a juvenile bike. This was like before like you could buy fixies. Yeah. It's a single speed, and like I did a little frame maneuvering. And I spray painted it pink. I got it this bike off Craigslist for forty bucks and built it with some uh, trash parts. Yeah, you love bikes. And uh, the, the Newton, uh, there's this, this famous Newton bike store. I got the uh, the pedals at. Yeah, 1915. You weren't around, but I was. I'm a vampire. Um, ne neon was invented. Issued a, issued a patent. Oh, okay. Yep. Next up, 1861. Also a little bit before your time. Elevator. First elevator. patent for an elevator. That's cool. All right. That was Time Travel Tuesday. So we do this every week. And it's interesting to roll back the clock. We even go back a little farther. But these are just some of the things that you can get a view. And it's such a surprise because the same day that we posted this up was when we visited Bree at yeah. MakerBot. And it was 2008 to the day. Very interesting. OK, next up, Jobs Board, IDO posted up a software engineer job on the Adafruit Jobs Board, the best place to post your skills if you're a maker or if you're a company, post your job. Free. Free. Um, Targeted we, audience. We moderate I guarantee every they're going to get like seven great oh, applicants. Yeah, absolutely. Because if, if they put their job on like Monster or any of these crazy it's jobs, just work, like it's, it's just like it's spam. It's not going to work out. Yeah. But here, we look at each one and we're like, oh, cool, IDO is a customer. So we'll let this one through. We looked at it. It looks like a cool job. So there's like an editorial yeah. uh, part of it. So anyways, cool stuff. Next up, we've got Community Corner. Uh, join okay. the Google Plus communities. Yep. We have about 39,000 people in Maker, there right now. Maker, hacker, designers, artists. Yeah, we've got a big tent for everybody there. A um, couple things I wanted to point out. This uh, showed up in the community. This is a puppet with a Menta, and it controls a Nerf gun, uh, a display, and a LED cigar. I thought that was really neat. And uh, we That's have a, a lot. Yeah, we have a community quarter video, and I want to show that now. And here it is.
In this video, I'll show you how you can use a ULN2803 to drive a motor. So, here's your input control. It goes through a switch and then branches off to pins 1 and 2. This is a schematic of the ULN2803 being used to drive a motor. On the input side there is a switch that is connected to plus 5 volts DC. The other side of this switch is connected to pins 1 and 2, which are inputs that control pins 18 and 17. One side of the motor is connected to pins 18 and 17. Hey guys, we're trying to control one of these, or a few of these, with a few of these, what we've come up with is this. Next week I'm going to get another one of these chips so I can set the thing up. Let's hope it's not an epic fail, the whole thing blows up. Alright, all about motor driver chips. Yeah, that's our community. And uh, what we try to do each week is have check-ins from different people and the staff. We have Matt and Becky and others. And so here is a check-in video from Matt. Hi, this is Matt Griffin, Director of Community and Support at Adafruit. Last week I spent a long time working in the Adafruit Learning System to make my tutorial for how to make the Times Square watch body that I had designed and shared on Thingiverse. Well, working in that system got me thinking about how we document all of our projects and how we can create tools like flowcharts and diagrams and blog posts and all sorts of things to, to help each other use the tools that are available at Adafruit. So that's where I'm spending a lot of my time on right now, is thinking about how I can use the Adafruit Learning System to help all of us use these tools better. Thanks. Okay. Next up, Adafruit Learning System. That's right. We had All some right. updates. Whew. Adafruit, we're, we're going we're to zip along here. Adafruit Learning System, another tutorial, learn Raspberry Pi. Lady this is a one. fun one. This one shows how to use the Occidentalist. Um, we, in our Occidentalist distro, we added a kernel module for uh, the servo pin. There's one pin that on the Raspberry Pi that can control a servo or PWM, and so we actually show how to uh, do that. We also show, oh, sorry, this is the motor one. Uh, this is a yeah. tutorial on how to use... Um, a motor driver with um, the Raspberry Pi and with PWM. There's also a tutorial on how to use a servo. Yeah. Not shown here, but you know, you can imagine it. Um, we also updated the Web IDE. There was. Um, oh, wait. Uh, what, don't, don't, don't go there yet. Sorry. Don't Lady Ada. Sorry. You're looking ahead here. Sorry. This is in time for third Saturday. Okay. Web what? IDE. <laughs> Raspberry Pi Web IDE. Um, this is a big. This is a big deal. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Little, I'm gonna do a little gear switch in here. So this is gonna be a combination of Pi Day, which is over here. Pi Day. With the Adafruit Learning System Raspberry Pi Web IDE and combining a little bit of this because we have a fantastic video. So okay. Now ready. Now I can. Sorry. I'm gonna unleash you. Go. Okay. So we so we <laughs> have this update video. Um, we recently um, updated the Web IDE to add a really cool debugger and visualizer, and this is a great video that explains a lot more about this powerful yeah. new feature. Tyler, uh, who's uh, currently uh, on vacation, a well earned and deserved vacation, made a fantastic yeah, video. Yeah, he's on the beach. Yeah, with. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, he works with Justin, and they're our uh, team on the learning system and the IDE. So, and they rocked it out. Without further ado, take it away. The Raspberry Pi Web IDE is by far the easiest way to run code on your Raspberry Pi. Just connect your Pi to your local network and log on to the Web IDE in your web browser to edit Python, Ruby, JavaScript, and easily send it over to your Pi. WebID includes a terminal, so you can send various commands to your Pi right from the browser. Also, your code will be versioned in a local Git repository and pushed remotely out to Bitbucket so you can access it from anywhere at any time. The Raspberry Pi WebID also includes a handy visualizer. Visualizer is a feature designed to help you understand how a Python program is working at a more basic level. It lets you see what the Python interpreter is doing as it steps through your program, such as variables being assigned, objects being created, etc. Another neat feature of the Web IDE is the Python debugger. This can be quite useful for many situations. The debugger allows you to step through your Python program in real time. 
Not only is the Raspberry Pi Web IDE packed with features and easy to use, it is also extremely easy to install. First, let's head on over to the Adafruit Learning System at learn.adafruit.com and look at the Web IDE guide. You can find the guide by going to the Raspberry Pi category and clicking on the Raspberry Pi Web IDE guide. Or you can simply type in learn.adafruit.com slash Web IDE in your browser. Once the guide is loaded, click on the installation link in the left sidebar. Take a moment to read through the installation instructions. Once you have read through the instructions, go back up near the top and copy the install script command by clicking on the copy code link in the upper right corner of the code box. Next, if you're using a Mac, open Terminal. If you're using a PC, you'll want to download and use a terminal program such as PuTTY. Following the installation instructions, go ahead and SSH into your Raspberry Pi. When prompted, type in your Raspberry Pi's unique password. If you haven't changed your password, it will be Raspberry by default. Once you have connected to your Raspberry Pi, you will paste the one line of code that we copied from the installation instructions. This command will download a script from the Adafruit repository and automatically install the Web IDE for you. It can take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes to install, but you can leave it unattended while it does its magic. Once the Web IDE installation has completed, you can open a browser on any computer in your network and type in http colon forward slash forward slash raspberrypi.local to open the Web IDE. First thing you will see when the Web IDE is fully loaded is a quick setup page. The setup page is where you will connect the Web IDE to your Bitbucket account and also configure your email and name for your Git commits. If you don't already have an account at Bitbucket, you can create a free account. Once you are logged into Bitbucket, go to the Manage Account and click on the Integrated Applications link in the left sidebar. Next, click the Add Consumer button. Type Web IDE into the Name text box and click Add Consumer button below. Now, we need to copy and paste the key and secret codes into the Web IDE. These codes will allow the Web IDE to securely link up to your Bitbucket account. Don't share these codes with anyone or they will be able to access your repository. Once you have filled out all of the fields in the setup page, you can then click Submit to continue to the login page of the Web IDE. This page is rather simple. It's a one button and when you click it, it will redirect you to bitbucket.org to log in and then it will redirect you back to the Web IDE. Unless you log out, you won't need to do this very often. You should be able to see the editor window within the Web IDE now, so you're all set to start creating your projects. Thank you for trying out the Adafruit Learning System Raspberry Pi Web IDE. We'll follow up with more videos explaining how to use the various features of the Web IDE in the weeks that follow, so be sure to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Okay, that's it. Okay. Now let's go on to Wearable Wednesday. Uh, just one last programming note on that. Um, I'm going to say this every week. Uh, the Web IDE is really important to us. We think every kid should learn a language. And I don't mean Spanish or French. I actually mean a programming language. And we think Python is the one. We think that a Raspberry Pi is a fantastic way to do this. It's a computer. The Web IDE is part of that. And this is why we're investing a lot of time and resources in it. So um, if you're yeah, it someone... Yeah, took two months to get that debugger working. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's not built into Python. Step by like, step that debugging. That was big done deal. by hand. Visualizer. Big deal. Yeah. Okay. Wearable Wednesday. Every week on the site, Becky Stern, director, director of Wearable <laughs> Electronics, puts together a lot of stuff. Um, this week, uh, we have a video, and I want to just jump right to that. Look at this cool animated GIF she made. Do, 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 animated do, do, GIF. Do, do, do. This is the first animated GIF in the um, Learn system. It is kind of yeah. fun. I kind of want everything to be animated GIFs now. Yeah. And so, uh, Becky has a video. Welcome to Wearable Wednesday, everybody. Uh, today we're testing out the Capacitive Touch Sense Library for Arduino with the Flora, also known as the Cap Sense Library. So I have two strips of woven conductive fabric uh, hooked up as per the example, and when I touch them, they, I have it coded to set this uh, Flora NeoPixel to a different color. Now I just have it toggling between red and blue. And I have this um, up on my ironing board because my desk surface is static dissipative, so the current actually affects the sensor. So you can see how then it's really easy to go to your sewing machine and use some conductive thread in your bobbin to uh, wire up these conductive fabric pads to our um, conductive four channel ribbon cable and have like a, you know, touch soft game pad or, um, you know, video game controller or 
music stereo remote or anything else. Um, so that's what we've got for Wearable Wednesday. Check out the complete tutorial on the Adafruit Learning System, and I'll see you next time. All right. Okay. 3D Thursday, just going to hop right in. We're just going to got to keep going through this. Keep going. Yeah, for 3D Thursday, I, uh, there were so many projects. I want to pick my favorite one. Okay. This is my favorite one. Look at this. Oh, the architecture one? Architectural yes, jewelry. Cool. You print out buildings and then you wear them. This is like the shard bracelet. <laughs> Look at this. I'm just going to wear a Coliseum. That's cool. Check me out. I'm just going to wear this building. This is the uh, this is the famous like arches in Rome, I think. Yeah, cool stuff. Hard to tell. It's them. starting to get weird, folks. As soon as everybody has a 3D printer, this is what happens. Yeah. All right. This is why we can have nice things. All right. Uh, new segment we're trying to do: Factory Fridays. Kind of like Flickr Poo Friday. They're in the Flickr uh, account on. Uh, on the Adafruit Flickr account. Yeah, these are lovely photos taken yeah. by John Jr. John Jr. taking some photos from inside the factory lady. Maybe you could tell people what this is. This is, uh, this is one of our employees learning how to stencil a PCB, so it takes a lot of practice learning how to use the stenciler, and uh, he's stenciling some boards for practice. This is... Um, this is John Bacon. John Bacon. And he he's, is uh, stenciling. stenciling. Yeah, you can see he's checking out. This is the pick and place, pick and placing more data logger shields. That's what he's stenciling. And then they go right into the machine yeah. for placement. This is our staff conversing, talking. That's uh, Bateman and Brian. Uh, Probably Bateman's talking in about charge kids. of the kidding department. <laughs> Brian's in charge of all production. It's James, he just started. Uh, uh, Jeff. Sorry, Jeff just started. Uh, and James. This week. And then James, a long time. Who helps uh, us with the jewelry. A uh, uh, person in our fabrication department. This is Bacon. We had uh, he was uh, off from school, and that's Kelly, and that's uh, Factory Friday. We're and he's teaching her how to how to use the system to that's make right. kits. This is okay. her first day. Next up, every week, usually every week, Kevin Townsend K Town has EE bookshelf. This week it was test driven development for embedded C. Check out his review of a book that he thinks is really good. He for loves to buy books and then review them. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you can you can save yourself hundreds of dollars by reading his review. You can't cover the entire book. Yeah. He Sometimes is. we have data sheets or app notes, but today was a uh, data sheet. K-Town notes. Is Go K-Town. All right, next up, Pi Day every single Friday on the Adafruit site. We have way, way too many posts, but is it really too much? I don't think so. Of Raspberry Pi. Can you ever posts. have too much Pi? No. There you go. You can never have too much RAM or too much Pi. That is that's true. Okay, so big news in the Pi world. The first one is, guess what, folks? We're, sick, we're shipping... Single unit pies. You can buy them right now. Yay! And you know what? If you're savvy, you can get a Raspberry Pi 10% off right now. And then get a bunch of stuff with the code with it. NASA. If you are in the U.S. and you get your order up to 250 UPS ground, Free everybody shipping. except for Alaska and Hawaii, you can do it. There's a lot of people that are good at the math and they do it. Yeah, you figure it out. Okay. Get some accessories too. Next up, um, we sponsored um, Magpie, the Magpie magazine, and this is going to be the ad that's running in it. It is just Adabot. Um, telling everyone to go check out our free tutorials and the free web IDE. No, the uh, learn system. The learn oh, system. and the web IDE. Yeah. Okay. All right, other big news. It looks like Raspberry Pi is about at a million. We did a post. We've been keeping track of things. Looks like they have... You have to copy and paste more of those icons. Yeah, it looks like they have about a million Raspberry Pis in channel. They won't know for sure soon, uh, until soon, but um, basically it looks like a million. Yeah. So their goal was to hit uh, a million within a year. And uh, Eben and Liz have always talked about how their uh, other goal is to have a $25 version, and that looks like it's coming out. Yep. So, we showed it on the uh, yeah. show a couple weeks ago. We have ago. a video that you guys can check out as well. One million pies. Incredible. You know what's cool? One billion pies. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what's cool is one million chances to teach. And I think yeah. that's what's really neat. Is every single one of them is an opportunity. Yeah. Okay. Um, before we go on to the next thing, it is time for the code. Make sure oop, you use the code NASA. NASA. This is the last time we're broadcasting from this location. So if you last like this time. location, use the code. Yeah. If you don't like this location, be vindictive and use the code. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's new product time. Okay. New, 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 new. Okay, I'm just going to start. We're just going to go. Um, yeah. Here is the Raspberry Pi. We have it in stock single unit. Go, go, go. Next up, rainbow cable. Yeah, hold on. This cable i got to show on the overhead because it's a little weird. So this is a kind of an interesting cable we found while looking for something else. Uh, I was actually looking for a six-pin version, but the, um, I found a ten-pin version. So it's a socket. It's a little tough to tell with a photo, but this is a, uh, a plug that fits into, like, you know, a USB TV. 
and this is Becky's, and uh, it comes out to um, separated pins. And so this can be useful if you're, if you, you know, this is actually also a, a 10 pin JTAG connector can be used for this. This is good if you're plugging into something and you have to swap around the pins or you want to be a little more flexible. Is that a socket? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it, it's a socket with, with pins in it. It's a socket with pins. What do you call that? A socket with it pins? It is weird because usually a plug would be not, it would not have the um, housing around it. And what I wanted was actually the six pin version, but unfortunately this, this part here, um, I actually looked at every manufacturer of this part and uh, none of them make a six pin version, so I only have 10 pin. But it's still pretty handy. Okay. And uh, it's, a, it's a little handy thing in your toolbox. Okay, we're gonna yeah. keep moving along here. Keep moving along. What's this thing? That is a JST extension cable. Um, one second, it's in here. Okay, so this is another one that has to be shown on the overhead because it's a little weird. You like Felix the Cat with that thing. Does anyone know who Felix the Cat is? I might be old. Felix the Cat is baggy, keep pulling out stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised they haven't remade Felix and ruined it. It's, I hope, no one's, I, hope no, I hope there's no Hollywood executives watching <laughs> yeah. this. Um, so we have, um, oh, can you go to the overhead? Oh. So we have a LiPoly batteries and also like these really cool um, three AAA battery holders with a switch that I like for um, wearable projects. He's the but dreamer. The is that, um, sometimes your project is is on a hat or a scarf or like or you know you're just building some other kind of uh, project and the battery is not going to be close to the plug because these these cables are not that long. They're only like you know four or five inches, and so we have this cable that's really long. It's 500 uh, millimeters. It's a half a meter long. Um, which is about two feet or so, a little bit less, and uh, and it's extension, and it's you know they we got these really nice cables with the sort of zippy line, and then you can plug your um, pack into one end, and then it's nicely heat shrunk and, and solid connection, and then you get an extension to the other end, so you, you get much more length. So it's just something people have been asking for. Becky was asking for this for wearable projects. Oh, now speaking we have. of, look at these photos of this in action. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Next yeah, it's interesting because I was looking around. I'm like, there is no such thing out there for this, and it was people wanted it. So All right, we got, got it. we got um, some open beam, two different colors. This I couldn't bring. There was no, there was no time for me to go through every yeah, part of it. But basically, we have the open beam starter kit, and it's just you know mostly some right angle bracket and some pieces. This is the machinist kit. Comes with like four stepper mounts, two servo mounts, like multiple connections, huge bags of screws, like. Tons of open beam. This is 15 millimeter beam. We'll also soon be having some 20 millimeter beam, which will be exciting. So yeah. look forward to that if you want to build slightly bigger machines. Um, yeah, these sold out real fast. We're getting more. Uh, they are, uh, you know, a fantastic way to sort of stock your um, workshop with everything you need to basically build, like not 3D printer, but like you know, a, a robot that maybe dispenses Lady Ada soda. tested and approved. Yeah, I like this stuff. This is, uh, okay. this is good stuff. What's cool about this is it doesn't use special uh, nuts. It just uses standard nuts. The, the yeah. gap is, is exactly the same size as an as a M3 yeah. hex nut. Okay, moving right along. Slip rings. Yeah, these, uh, I'll show these because it's been a while. We had uh, six wire slip rings, um, both the teeny capsule and the flange type. And uh, some people are like, well, I have more than like six wires. And I was like, okay, I'll get the 12 wire version. It's a little more expensive. I actually wasn't expecting people to need 12 wires. But they did. So right. now we have a 12 wire version. All right. And then do you want to go to the overhead or do you want to keep going? Yeah, I'll, I'll show it on the overhead real fast so okay. people can see what's going on here. So uh, a slip ring is basically you have 12 wires on either side. And in the middle is a capsule. And there's these little gold fingers. We actually have a video of taking this apart in one of the product pages. So this can twist around, but it maintains contact at all times. So it's really handy for uh, power data transmission on something that's twisting or turning or um, I actually thought these would be really cool for uh, like wearable projects or robots yep. where like the head is twisting. You want to make sure that the wires don't bind. Yeah, I thought it'd be fun for an LED thing that you spin around, yeah, like a big that. POV thing. Like, yeah. I forgot the name of the thing with the ball on the end. That Bolo. You, Bolo, you smash people with it, yeah. with the spikes. But instead it would have LEDs oh, that's a maze. and be filled with love. Yeah, okay. okay. All right, uh, let's keep moving. Another version of it. Yeah, this is the version with flange. It's just easier to attach to something. It's a little bigger. Yeah. But it has mounting holes. All right. Next up. Mini barcode scanner modules. I was actually looking for this because I wanted to use, I was looking for a little OEM module used in the shop and um, I found the, this distributor maker of these little modules. These are cool because, um, and this is something that's like only people who are hardcore barcode enthusiasts know about. There's two types of scanners. One's a mirror where the mirror shakes yeah. back and forth. 
And those are those are less expensive. That's a clever hack that someone figured out. It is cool, but yeah. the, the problem is that you're dependent on this like moving mirror, and it's like it's you, it's hard. You can't move them fast, yeah, yeah, and they're yeah, not yeah. meant for like du- they're not rugged and as durable because they have this moving assembly inside. Um, these are a CCD image. There's actually a camera inside and the camera takes a photo and there's this red light that provides contrast it takes a photo and then when it takes a photo it, it decodes the image it's also clever because yeah. you think it's a, a laser like a thing. It, looks, it looks like it was, but it's not that's just the, the the contrast bar so it's not it's not it's a really laser clever people out there but it's a little bit more expensive but yeah. they're they, this makes it very small so these are very compact which i really like um, and they're programmable there's a huge manual and you can like set all the settings we have two types you have the ps2 which yeah. has a, like a PS2 keyboard wire. That's good for uh, like an okay. Arduino. I'll go this way. Yeah, if you if you want to use this with like an Arduino or like a basic stamp or a propeller or something, you want this one because it, PS2 is a very microcontroller friendly protocol. Five volts. It's like simple bit output. There's a library on Arduino. We plug it in. It works out of the box. It's it's really yeah. lovely. We also have a USB version. A USB version uh, is for people who want to build like little tablet controlled things or like a Raspberry Pi thing or yeah. BeagleBone, something that has a USB host. This one, it just it looks like a keyboard. If you know when you type when you when you barcode scan it, it it you know types it out. Yeah. So I just thought I would show the the barcode scan yeah, people want to see what it looks like in action. So I have it on the overhead. So it's just the head, and then there's this cable, and then this is the USB one, and it's just connected to a, a hub. I just want to power bleep, it. Bleep, bleep. There's a beeper. You can disable the beeper um, yeah. by scanning a special barcode in the manual. Um, there's a button that you can use to like kind of force activate, but it auto scan. You can see it's taking a photo every like few seconds or yeah, seconds yeah, yeah. here to scan it. And then you can replace this cable if you don't want to stick a cable. Like you can make your own thing. And so here's this is cool. This is like a smart tester I got. And um, you can oh, see. Oh wow! Hold on a second. Well, I just heard a beep. I think you want you do want to do it. Yeah, like a beep beep. Yeah, it's fast. You just have to get it to, to so that the image is right on top. So I'm scanning the wow. barcode. Wow. So it's it's quite fast. Um, you just kind of have to remember it's it's not a laser, so you don't want it to be really close. It has to be like six to twelve inches away. That's ideal. This is cool. And it only does linear barcodes. These do not do QR codes. Yeah. So just so you know. And one of the fun things is we're kind of eating our own dog food. We use all this stuff in production now. And then you can see this is the, the cameras in the middle, and this is the lens that emits the, the light. We, uh, we use this uh, with some of our inventory systems. And also, uh, on a side note, we made a Raspberry Pi based uh, receiving system. Jordan yeah. built that. Very cool. So, yeah, the PS2 one is very similar, but they're not, you know, they're, they are different. They have different chips on them. So, you, you, you have to buy one. You can't okay. swap one, from the, one to the other. Moving right along. This is a goth toothbrush for brushing your dark oh, okay. teeth. Is it no, okay. Well, I was actually I was actually cleaning some circuit boards in 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 the office. We we you know saw some circuit boards and I wanted to clean them up, and I was actually annoyed because I'm like I I don't have a brush for cleaning a circuit board because mm-hmm. uh, some people are really picky. I was actually trying to get like a little bits of solder off, but like some people like they like to take their rosin off. Yeah. Or if you're using um uh you know very active flux. Um, you have to clean it off with a little bit of like rubbing alcohol, and you you scrub it with this. And this is just, um, I mean, the photo is really good, so I'll just check out the photo. But it's an ESD safe brush, and uh, these are fantastic. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's got nice stiff bristles, so but not so stiff that'll damage your board. Okay, so it's not the Robert Smith Colgate edition. Robert Smith from the Cure. Robert it's Smith. Not that. No. Okay, fine. All right, let's keep moving. Robert Smith did not have this big teeth. Okay. What okay, we have a bevy of these. of these breakout boards because we have them in like every size. So these are little um, circuit boards. And you, yeah, you can just spin through the photos. Uh, on one side, they have a SOIC surface mount part. On the other hand, the other side, they have a TSOP um, surface mount part. And basically, you can solder a chip on and then you can use it in a through hole breadboard or you can solder wires to it. So in the shop right now, I think we have 28, uh, 20, and 16 pin ones and then um, on Monday morning we'll uh, we'll get the remaining in we have the 8 pin the uh, 12 pin the 14 pin and um, the the some of them come in packs of three no sorry the the small ones come in packs of sixes the larger one come in pack of, of threes yeah. uh, so you get three of the identical one because you always want to have a couple extra kicking around yeah and um, they all have point six inch spacing except for the teeniest one all the way to the right which is um, which is a uh, point three inch spacing so it's the same size as a dip 
No, now, Lady Ada, I've shopped around because I was looking around and I've noticed that other stores online, they only sell you one and they're only one side and they charge more. If you go to like DigiKey, these are like $10. Why would they do that to people? Because they're not cool. Really? Because they don't have goth toothbrushes. Yeah? No, actually, I, I remember when I was in school, I bought some surfboards, that's what they're called, from DigiKey, and we paid like four or five dollars for a single board. And so, it's actually funny, I designed these boards, I can actually, I should post up a screenshot. I have the, these boards in my like Media Lab folder that I've like, copied. Yeah. Um, I designed these in like 2003. <laughs> And I made a run of them. You're so upset. You told uh, yeah. me the story and you showed me. I was me. so pissed because yeah. I was like, what do you mean I'm paying five bucks per? I can like make a pile of these and send them off and, and get them made. Yeah. So actually I did. And that was back in like 2003 or 2004 or whatever. And um, not even, even earlier maybe, 2002. I don't remember. Yeah, 2003, um, when I was about to graduate, I made a whole bunch of these. And then um, I was like, oh, you know, I should have these in the shop. And I just kind of put it off. And until during the Christmas break, I was like, yeah, I should, you know, I should really do that. Sat yeah. down and uh, with help from uh, Mike Stone, we like blasted these out. I like when you get angry, you just like hit Eagle CAD. Yeah. So you're just like, I'm just going to open this up and make a bunch of hardware. I'm not, I'm not an angry drunk. I'm an angry uh, <laughs> layout person. Right. Anyway, so check these out. We'll have also um, for a 48 pin. Yeah. And we'll also have a bunch of uh, little transistor, like you know, SOT 23s and and you know, TO 252s. We'll have we'll have we have a, three more board sets coming okay, in. We got to keep moving here. Next up, crimpers. These are actually also not in the store yet. These will be in the store on Monday. But hey, sign up now. Yeah. These are some pretty sweet ratcheting crimpers. I really like these. They're um, not too expensive, but they they can crimp a wide range. Some uh, 28 American wire gauge, I think 16 or something. So they'll do like the most, some of the most uh, common crimper things if you're making wire harnesses. Making wire harnesses suck, so having a good crimper is good. And I've used non-ratcheting ones. The nice thing about these is they release when you put enough pressure on them, so they don't. You can't crush the connector too much because it'll it'll snap open. Okay. Next up, look at this. This is another new one that's not in the store yet. You put up all these in. Um, this is a, a promo proto that fits in a Altoid Smalls. We'll show these also next week. When the when this is posted up, all the products will be in. We just ran out of time on Friday. Yeah. We had a big meeting. But it's cool. Uh, so it's a little little circuit board. So it's a yeah. it, small. All these small tins are cute. Yeah. So this is a little a little mint tin, and it has like you know it's like a little teeny proto board. You could probably make a, like a mini project in there yeah. and shove it in a tin. Okay. Next up, what are these things? Uh, these are just JST cables. We sell them in pairs now. Okay. Got that going on. All right. This is an update. Okay. We Next also up. have an update. We now carry the um, uh, Alpha Clock 5. Yeah. Right? That's the name of it? Yeah. No, I don't remember. The Alpha in Clock white. 5 in white. It is blinding. Look at that. And it's 10% uh, off with of the code tonight. Yeah. But only tonight. It's a okay. huge It's a huge clock. We have one in the, in the uh, office. It's awesome. Yeah. And now... The absolute star of the show. I'm going to take off the logo here. I'm going to take off us. Just look at this. Just look at this. This is <laughs> the new Hakko Digital. I want to lick this And thing. photo by John Janier. Classic. Just look at it. Okay, Lady Ada, what is new about this? Okay, this is the new... Hacko digital we have it like super soon we got I ordered them as soon as they announced that we would be able to order them um, so it's got the same uh, joyous Hacko colors hold on let me pick up my Hacko wait my okay. turned around a little bit here um, it's got the same joyous Hacko colors let me uh, but let me just get let me get you let's get oh. it I'm gonna get me out of here okay yeah I want to hold this up Look at that. so it's got um, a display and you can set the, the display and it heats up super fast you can see it's going up 200 and it's in Fahrenheit I don't know if you can set it in Celsius but check the check the manual it, I, I, there probably is a way to set it into Celsius mode but I, I use Fahrenheit anyways um, it can do lead free it actually goes like up to like 800 some odd degrees um, it's got the same lovely tip Selection you can just use it. Actually, the control, the actual wand is the same. This is the body's difference. There's on off, and then you can set the temperature using these buttons. Digital readout, so you can have a precision output. It's heating up here. Um, this is awesome. This is like super high quality. It's as heavy as heck. 
It heated up already. Like, that's actually really fast. Like, most irons don't heat yeah. up so fast. Even, I have an old Hacko, the 936 behind me, the black ones, yeah. and uh, they heat up, it takes like two or three times as long. This is a fantastic iron. So this is a sweet, sweet iron, and we have a bunch of them. Um, yeah. I'm glad to have both the analog and digital. I think that, honestly, the analog ones are extremely good, and you don't have to be more precise than like 50 degrees when you're um, soldering, but some people just want to have a digital output, understand it. If you yeah. wanted to pay a little bit more, you can get that digital output. Yeah, um, here's the thing. I'm just gonna look at this photo again for a okay. second. Just look at it. Isn't that beautiful? I want to zoom in a little bit there. Very beautiful. It's very glossy. Yeah. Yeah, they do this interesting sort of ceramic finish. I know it's like a metal ceramic feel finish. It's, a, it's an interesting uh, yeah, style. Yeah, it's a beautifully designed thing and it works great. And I know, of course, people are like, oh, like the purple and yellow is kind of weird. But actually, I kind of like, I, you know, I kind of like it because it stands out. Yeah, it's grown on me and because it stands out. And when you look at it across a room, you're like, oh, that's a hacko. Yeah. It's neat. Okay. Guess what? You got through all the new products. I tried to go as fast as possible. Good job. All right. Do you want to do It's Not Out or do you want to just do questions? Let's just do questions because right. we should. Uh... Here is... Question time. Ask Lady Ada your engineering questions. And we'll finish up. We'll finish up at eleven. It'll be great. Will be giving a class presentation on maker hacker tinker culture? What should I? Oh, will be giving. Oh, this person is giving one. Um, if you're giving a class presentation on maker maker hacker tinker culture, there's a really good book by uh, Bob Parks a long time ago called Makers. Um, check it out because it was almost like ten years ago now. Yeah, and I, I think that's a, a good origin story. And then for other pieces of maker and hacker culture, um, I have a few articles on Make. Um, I had the soapbox series that kind of talks about like the unspoken rules of open source hardware. I think um, some of the documentary things, uh, the, t uh, the videos about Maker Fair. I also think all the hackerspace articles. Um, uh, talk to people like Mitch Altman if you're going to do something because he was there from the start. Um, kind of spreading the word of hackerspaces. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Chris Anderson's book, Makers, is more on the Industrial Revolution side, the next one. Um, but it has but some it, history. It, it does it? have some history. Yeah. Okay, next up. Uh, I can't find the schematic for the Nokia 55110 module. Where can I get this? Uh, we don't have a schematic. Yeah. Sorry. Don't I don't one. have one. We have the, but the pinouts are, uh, you they, know, they work. Now. Yeah, I, I recently saw a schematic with several zero ohm resistors. What's the point of a zero ohm resistor? Um, it's often a jumper. Sometimes um, the, they have to either open or close that um, connection, or they want to use a variable resistor. And if they end up deciding that uh, the connection should be closed, they use mm -hmm. zero ohm because they can't. They don't want to make multiple circuit boards, so they have one circuit board, and then they change the resistor value. And sometimes the resistor is just zero. Next up, uh, someone said they're. Maybe going to make a cool Nike fuel band clone with a floor and accelerometer. Yeah, right, go that. for it. Right. Yeah, we is will it, have an accelerometer module for the floor. Is it possible to pass electricity through magnets? If so, how? Um, that's a good question. I believe that when you pass electricity through magnets, does, I don't know if it demagnetizes them a little bit. Well, there's um, snaps that pass electricity because they do, but I mean, at hot, bits, hot, for instance. yeah, it's true. Well, no, the, um, they do not pass electricity through the magnets. Oh, they, I thought they went through no, the magnets. No, 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 the magnets are just for alignment. Oh, I thought uh, they did. did oh, okay, mm -hmm. so no, because you can't solder to magnets. So, um, oh, that's right. But I thought they okay because when you when gonna, you pass when you pass the electricity through something, it creates a magnetic field. So I don't yeah. know if that would affect the magnetism. I don't know. It's a good physics question. Well, you could find a physicist. Go on the Ask a Physicist show and ask them. Let's look at <laughs> physics. We'll question. question. All right. Uh, next up. Clean this. Is there any good hardware for reading QR codes? It's expensive. There isn't. I actually looked. I've, I've been looking for a while, and uh, there is there's nothing quite as cheap as just using like a, a phone with okay. a camera. Let's get moving. I am moving. Well, yeah, want me to answer these can questions. Can use one GPS module on both an ice tube and a monocron sitting next to each other? Can you use one GPS for both? Yeah, you could. Okay. Uh, how can I upload a project on the Avery Fruit Learning System? Well, we do take on additional authors. Um, what we suggest is uploading your pro your project to something like Instructables. We like to make sure people are, can do good tutorials, and then we open it up kind of one at a time. We actually want to make sure each one is great. Yeah. It's not just an open system where anyone can post anything yet. Okay. Uh, next up, I have a project where I need to check the X Y angles of something better than 1.25 minutes of angle every sensor I have. Has 0.5 degrees and it's just not anywhere near enough resolution. Any suggestions? I don't know. You're you're getting into like industrial uh, measurement technology. Okay. Not sure. Next up, uh, can the super bright five millimeter IR LED 940 nanometer be powered from the five volt of the Arduino? 
Um, you'll you'll want to use a resistor, but yeah, I mean you can okay. connect it up with a resistor. What conformal coating or other products for water treating would you guys recommend? Conformal coating works great. Okay. Can a frequency help or hurt a capacitor? Uh, it depends on the capacitor. Capacitors are different capacitor types. I meant for different frequencies. Check the data sheet. They will have a capacitance to frequency okay. graph. Want to make a Jeopardy-like button circuit to indicate who is first? Google around a lot of stuff, not really get any suggestions. I don't know. Go on Instructables. I saw a lot of There's like, a game lot show of stuff. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of game show projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's a good project to get into Raspberry Pi? On learn.adafruit.com, check out the Raspberry Pi Light wand, light painting. Well, that's not a good Pi. beginner project. You don't think so? No, because there's a you, lot of beginners. We, are but doing we have it. a lot of projects to get them to that point. Yeah, you can also go through our tutorials with we Simon have like Monk six, and Lady Ada. Yeah, we have six tutorials. Yeah. I would get, I would just get it up and running first, and then explore some of our like you know, lighting up an LED when you have new email. That's a good okay. beginner project. Need, uh, if I make my own board with the Arduino AT Tiny and I need five volt power and analog and digital, can it be done? Any suggestions? The what? If I make I my own the... board with the Arduino AT Tiny and I need five volt power and analog and digital, can it be done? Any suggestions? I. Don't really understand their question. Okay, next up. What is the best way to do IC isolation in small footprint for sensing current? Progress. Oh, I'm reading too many. Uh, you can use an AC AC transformer. Okay, they, progress. They have the ones in the little plastic. On TI TMP plugs. 006 temperature sensor. I'm still working on it. Okay, next up. I was given 100. It will, it, when it's released, you'll see it on the blog. Yeah, I was Ask given beforehand. Of won't help. 74 HC series ICs, about 400 and one two digit seven signal LEDs. I don't know if that, that's not a, uh, what mega project could you think? Oh, so it's hundreds of 74 HC sensor uh, series ICs and about 401 to two digit. There L was a person who made like um, at Maker Faire that they made like a, a display using only seven segments. Yeah. You could probably do something like that. Okay. Uh, we answered a conformal coding line. Uh, what happens if my order doesn't ship by the 27th and I've moved by then? Um, you should email your, support. Your order um, will definitely ship by the 27th. So. But you should email support if yeah. there's an issue with right. shipment. Next up, how long until floorboards are sent to Mars? Uh, 2027 in October. Uh, next up. Okay. It's a very specific date. Would you support a show that highlights products weekly? Um, just not enough time. We can only do an hour and a half. It's a lot. I mean, we do yeah. a lot right now. Uh, maybe we'll add more people, but you know, we're cranking out gigs of video. Yeah. A week right now. We showed like four videos just tonight. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, how many far, how far away in inches can I have a servo extended with your 16 channel PWM board before I run into problems? Probably a foot. Uh, let's see. Have you solved the web IE no script problem? Uh, but do a request on the uh, on GitHub if there's any issues with it. Yeah. We're really responsive on yeah, that. Yeah, you can put up an issue. All right. Whew. Uh, that is it. All right, great. We just burn through all the questions. <sighs> all right. Good work. Okay. You're like, a, you're like a sprinter. Okay. I'm testing her for EPO. Just saying it. How do you do it? Well, I have this T. Yeah. And my brush. Okay. <laughs> all right. So um, let's... Uh, Magic brush. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's do the trivia question. It could also be an eyebrow brush. Let's do the trivia question. I would not clean a PCB and then do your eyebrows. Okay. Trivia question. Lady Ada, can you give the uh, rules for the trivia question? Sure. If you've won uh, this prize, a prize from the uh, show already, you can't enter this contest because we're letting everyone enter. And so far, we've had a new person win every week, which is exactly our devious plot. Yeah. Um, it's the I'm first person devious. to... The, the answer is not very devious. So the first person to answer the question correctly uh, wins a fabulous prize. What's the prize tonight? Well, I was going to ask, do you want to give away one of the barcode? Um, yeah, sure. Do you want to do that? Yeah, we can give away a barcode reader. How much are this? They're, they're all expensive. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Let's do it. We just promised it. Okay. You get one. Either PS2 or USB up to you, whichever one you uh, okay. prefer. Okay. So we'll give that away. All right. Are you ready? Yes. This is an audio question. We're going to do this. Are you ready? On January 19th, an American patent was issued to who for a system of illuminating luminescent tubes, also known as neon lights? Were you paying attention earlier today? Yes. Because there's a quiz. First person to post the uh, person's name there. Who got this patent? Who got it? Who got this patent? It's what, on what, the, what, what was it's the on time travel. Oh, Mobile Will, George... Claude, congratulations. Yay! You win. 
Another method of illuminating. Another method. Of known as the barcode scanner. Congratulations. Uh, where'd you go here? Email support. Mobile will email support at adafruit.com and you get one of these barcode scanners. Okay. Good work. Awesome. Fast typing. You read Time Travel Tuesday. Or you went back in time and you knew that I was going to ask that. Whoa. All right. Okay. We did it. That's it. Okay. Exactly on time tonight. Yeah, I wanted to have George to give me a break. Yeah. All right, wait, We're also cat. exhausted people. Yeah, also there's a cat that's like totally exhausted behind me. Yeah. You see this exhausted can you go, cat? Can you go grab him? He's exhausted. Yeah. Oh, wait, he's waking up. It is now time for cat. He was resting here. Hello. Morning. Oh, wow. Good that morning. is a sleepy cat. He's a sleepy cat. Here he is. To, here, he's totally. To he's totally tired. This is what the internet was made for. What was oh, neat is we so were tired. we were on the Make um, International mi mi Second Annual International Maker Meetup, and Eben from the Raspberry Pi Foundation had uh, his cat. He's really Mooncake tired. is their cat's name. Yeah, Mooncake. Mooncake, yeah. So Mooncake and MOSFET. Uh, Mo it's kind, a festival. Kind of met. So this is what the internet was made for: for cats to communicate over. Uh, Long distances. Over long distances, because they, you know, they don't have time. They're Do you tired. Want me to barcode scan this cat. You want to barcode scan MOSFET? I don't think it's gonna work. All right, let's see if he has a. Let's see what happens. Meep 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 meep. No. Nope. He's not a striped cat. He's not a tabby. No. He He's very interested in this. Oh hey. That's cool. Would you like to sniff this? Thing? That's cool. You can give him a little mustache. All right. You can give him like a cool tattoo. Okay. So. Okay. What a fantastic three and a half years. I want to thank everyone who's uh, you watched the show. You will never see this behind us You again. won't see this background. Thank you for everyone who held, uh, uh, stayed with us, um, uh, encouraged us, supported us, cheered us on, bought something once in a while. Um, Use the code. For, forgave some audio issues or technical issues that come up when you do a show every week like this. Um, we're going to make the show bigger and better. Every single time, we hope, every single year. And uh, what a fantastic uh, three and a half years in the space that we've been doing the show. Yeah. Um, we're going to go to sleep now. We are exhausted. <laughs> and we'll see everyone uh, next week. And it'll be from the Adafruit Factory, unless something crazy happens and we'll tell everybody in advance. Yeah. Here is your moment of Zener. <laughs>